Hi guys, welcome down to the Monday Night Golf Show with myself, Rick Shields and Peter Finch and this is a roundup of everything that's happened in the world of golf over the last week, uh, covering all different tournaments around the world and golf news in general. That is a very precise summary of exactly what will be going on within the next 20 so minutes and we will start with someone rolling back the years. I know, literally. Da Davis Love, I, I, I. At the Wyndham Championship. You did it much better this morning. Aye, aye, aye! That's better. <laughs> More dramatic. Uh, he won. <laughs> he did win. <laughs> he won. He won. Amazing. He won. Just once, though, not three times. Uh, Roll back the years, becomes the third oldest player on tour to win at 51 years in the three months and 10 days, I think it was, or something. Four yeah. months? Four months. Four months, sorry. In 10 days. Once, once you get to that age, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> you don't count the one, really. Not really. Um, yeah, last round 64 to beat Jason Gore by the one stroke. Unbelievable victory. The last time he won was seven years ago, yeah. set 2008. He was unbelievably hot in about 2003 when he won four or five tournaments, picked up a couple more till 2008, and then literally has not won anything since now. No, absolutely. Real, real rare name at the top of the leaderboard now. Yeah, which is a surprise because... As you'll see in the actual swing analysis, it's not really like his swing has actually altered that much. But I don't know, I suppose when you get to 51, I mean, he's obviously eligible for playing full-time Champions Tour if he wants to. And if he carries on like this, obviously he'll, he'll be another player up there absolutely cleaning up Monty. Monty won't be happy. Yeah, Monty Langer. They'll be like, Davis Love, no, no. What? What? <laughs> what are you doing here? So yeah, it's fantastic. And it, is, it is great to see. It just shows again that at this sport, if you're good enough to compete, it doesn't matter what age you are, you can still get up there yeah. and have a go. And that fantastic. is what is fantastic. You look at the leaderboard and it's mixed with mm. young and old and experience and newbies and real real mix of golfers and a real tidal wave of different results that were going on as well. There was Mr. Tiger Woods. <laughs> yes. We'll come to Tiger Watch, should we? Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get have a little we'll separate, separate Tiger se Watch section, of course. But you had um, leaders and then people who were blowing up and then people who were shooting 64s and 66s to climb up the leaderboard like crazy. Absolutely amazing. I'll put the leaderboard up on screen as well for you there so you can see all the results. Um, Tiger Watch. Tiger Watch. Dun, dun, dun. Arr. And it's actually a positive. <laughs> yes. Three rounds of golf, 54 holes where he played fantastic golf. Yeah, and apart from, well, one real blow up on the last day, um, it would have been a 67, so we had a triple um, just after the turn. Uh, backed it up with a bogey and then four birdies coming in for the, the rest of the round, was pulling up his scorecard here. So He shot level par to lose, <laughs> to miss out by four. Yeah, he'd been shooting three and four unders all the way through the tournament. It's such a shame he couldn't really put that last round together. But, but for Tiger fans out there, and I know kind of me and Rick have said before, we're both uh, big fans of Tiger. I've been since we were... Huge. Uh, since we were kids, which... I love seeing his traditional red shirt back in action Back as well. in action, yeah. I was a proper, proud, I'm going to win proud, this, proud win this tournament. So it, it was great to see, and he did play some excellent golf. So the signs are very, very yeah. positive going forward. Now, Did it, you mention after his triple, he, he went bogey then? Yeah, four birdies. Back to it with birdies, yeah, which Crazy. is just like, just brilliant. Well, well it's if brilliant he wouldn't have had that, If he wouldn't that. have had those two holes, that's it, two holes away from... Tying the lead. I mean, if you had have had, hard, I mean, if, hard those two. Well, if you hadn't have had those two holes, it would have been disqualified. You can't just skip. <laughs> go in, in, go in, in, the, in the scores or after, just like crossing listen, guys, them out. Listen, guys, listen. <laughs> if I give you some signed merchandise, we just get rid of those two holes. Just get rid of eleven and twelve. We don't need those. They two. never happened. So yeah, fantastic tournament. And like I said, Davis Love will be uh, Davis Love the third after. Will be our swing analysis. No, it's not Davis. What is it? Come on. Davis Love, I, 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 will be our swing analysis There's today. There's just no passion in it for you, is there? Can you do it? You do it more. What? The, the, I'm not the, doing the it full again. Up. Davis Love, I, 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 Davis Love, I, 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 Davis Love, I, I, I. There you go. That's how you say his name. Wow. That's how they say his name on, on TV as well. It's a fact. All you guys watching last night, you know it. The weird thing is... That's how his kids greet him in the morning as well. That's the strange one over breakfast. <laughs> his wife going to bed. <laughs> Good night, Davis. Love. Oh, oh, I, I, I. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. Let's give over to the, Euro <laughs> the European tour at the Denmark tournament uh, where we had a home winner. 
A home froze. Not home in Denmark. Froze, yeah. An English player, Dave Horsley, who won the tournament, uh, mm. had a fantastic round and ended up winning by two in the end. Um, oh, Dave, so he, had, he had a great tournament. His last round was really dodgy, really. Over par 73. 73 shot last round. 73. I mean, he was, to be fair, him and pretty much everyone else, apart from Sora Kelson, who was having a bit of a charge, they were all kind of. It was a bit patchy golf wise, but I mean, the tournament itself, um, obviously, um, made in Denmark, it was in Denmark. Uh, the golf course looked amazing, and the 16th, especially, was a cracking little hole. Consistently played around 100 yards. On the last day, it was 86 yards. Just 86 cool, like yards, which is really cool, which is totally different than what you see. But the actual green, um, just a natural amphitheatre surrounded by people, and he made a really good spectacle. They gave out, the organisers, like duck noises. Right. So everyone around the 16th, when anyone kind of, well, when anyone finished, you're just pressing these ducks. So you just had loads of ducks quacking and then people clapping. It was the most random thing I'd ever heard. And talk about random things, and it was a, it was a perfect setting <laughs> for. Uh, a certain Andres Harto, who, uh, after playing the 16th and played it really well, birded, birded it, it. <laughs> pulled out his girlfriend from the crowds and got down on one knee and proposed. So, fantastic way of doing it. I showed my missus, it's the only golf she watched all weekend. Um, <laughs> she, she loved it as well. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Congratulations. She said, she said yeah. I showed, uh, I showed my girlfriend. Did you know what she said? Did he make the cut? Wow, she's brutal. She is brutal. She is brutal. And the answer <laughs> is, no, he didn't. <laughs> That's why he did it on the Friday. <laughs> if he'd have known, he would have done he it, on, did the it on the Sunday. But he had to make sure, had to get it in there. But it was fantastic. It was great to see. It was, wow. re it was really good to see. I, I like stuff like that. I like stuff like that. Yeah, it, I think it's the first proposal actually during the round of golf on tour. I think there's been ones after and maybe before, but that's the first one actually during tournament play. Yeah. It's an odd, odd sport, this isn't it? It's like, kind of mental. This it's, is, it's, really it's just odd. full of crazy people. <laughs> it's just it? full of mental. You couldn't do that in any other sport. Or you could maybe if you're running the marathon, but not if you're leading it. Not if you're doing well in it or something like that. Absolutely. Mental. Imagine Lewis Hamilton getting out, spit the pit stop, getting out and proposing. <laughs> <laughs> not sure it would quite happen. So in other news, and uh, part of, of the golfing world we've never really covered before, the US Amateur finished this weekend, mm -hmm. and we have a new winner on the trophy, Bryson DeChambeau, who is a physics major from the University of Southern uh, Methodist University, and he's mm -hmm. a senior, managed to win 7-6 over Derek. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> Just Derek. <laughs> Derek. Just Derek. There's no other top player or no other top amateur called Derek. So he can just be called Derek. <laughs> just Derek. <laughs> Derek, thanks for watching. Um, so yeah, he won 76 in the end. Unusual character in many respects. You don't often, it's quantum physics he's majors in as well, which is mind boggling in itself. But from a golf perspective, very individual kind of player as well. Individual action. And also, he has all these clubs at the same length. So all the seven iron length, all the same All these irons. That all is. these irons. But then all the lofts just crank to four degrees difference, which he says gives him exactly 12 yards difference between the clubs and doesn't mean he has to alter around much at all, which is new in my respect. I've not heard of anyone really but do it that before. It does kind of make sense. I understand why you're yeah. saying it. So all of, the, all of the shafts are the same weight and all of the heads are the same. They're just bent differently four degrees stronger or weaker to make out make up the differences between the clubs and like i said he hits them 12 degrees different 12 yards different so each degree is three three yards which we always say it is roughly mm -hmm. anyway 10 to 12 yards but i always thought the length of the club would add that extra bit of club head speed getting hitting the ball further or getting the individual hitting the ball yeah. further he disagrees um and being a <laughs> quantum physics major um who is who is to argue with him and certainly as now the u.s amateur winner yeah He's got everything, everything going with him. Yes, I, if if I if I was giving some sage words of advice, I would advise everyone not to run out to their garage right now and start chopping their clubs down. It works, it works for Mr. Shambo, De Shambo, but it might not work for you. Um, maybe he's onto something, but let's give it a little bit more. Yeah, let, let's test, see how he gets on first. first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't go crazy. Um, and love the fact that he's got a little bit of an individual style in his in his looks as well. He wears the uh, Payne Stewart kind of flat cap as mm -hmm. well, which is quite quite a cool little look, isn't it, really? Yeah, Again, like not, it. not a lot of people wear that. Um, I'm sure Derek didn't wear that. I'm sure Derek just wore normal P 
peaked cap. What's your issue, Derek? <laughs> oh, poor guy. And in other news, the Pin Seekers Be The One competition is drawing to a close. So after several weeks of fierce competition, Team Finch and Team Rick have been battling it out. And the top player from each of those leagues, they're going to be playing with me and Rick at a date probably sometime in the autumn. That needs to all get fixed up. But if you have been taking part, thank you very much. And also, if you've not downloaded the app yet, get on it. It's a great way to rank yourself against other players across the world. Absolutely. Links, links are going to be down in the description below. Uh, and we're really looking forward to having a bit of a match and also taking our our leaders of the leaderboard out and actually seeing how we get on with them being our partners. Uh, I think the venue's been confirmed now. It's at, yes. at a St. Andrews golf course. Yeah, it's in St. Andrews. I, we'll have to probably check with Ben 100% what we yeah, can we say. Not say. But we, we have just dropped it's in St. Andrews. So it's in St. Andrews. There hey. you go. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think that's been confirmed. I think that's yeah. pretty, pretty much definite. Uh, so <laughs> stay tuned to find out who is the winner for that and keep playing well. Team Rick all the way, please. And Team Finch, please. Uh, also on our, on our little quest, we've got uh, new videos coming out of Quest of the Open video. We're going to finalise details of that and also really put a, a kind of itinerary together of how we're going to accomplish our goal. Pete played his first tournament on Friday and did very well, actually. I was quite impressed. Yeah, I'm not, not as impressed as I was. So go and check was, out Pete's channel as well for the, the little video of myself. that. <laughs> the, the, the summary of that was pretty impressive as well. So go and check out that. Uh, first prime and shoots level par. Yeah, a very nervous level par, but need to start somewhere. Yeah, got no, to start that somewhere. That was good, well done. I'm more nervous about playing in my first tournament now. I'm gonna go watch after that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, guys, in in other other news, we are coming to New York. Just drop it in there. Yeah, just... we're coming to New York in September. If you're interested in golf schools, you can email us using this email address below. Uh, we're going to drum up some uh, interest first and we're going to plot exactly what we're going to do when we're in New York, some golf schools while we're there as well. In the middle of September. Absolutely. It's going to be probably the weekend or just before, is it the 10th to the 12th? It's somewhere yeah. around that kind of um, time period. So if you are interested in having a lesson with either me or Rick, email this below. We are going to do another video on this just explaining it a little bit more, but drop us an email and get involved. We're probably only going to have time to do one day as well so yeah. it's going to be absolutely rammed when we do it yeah. so get your interest in early right shall we get to the swing analysis davis love i i i and then we'll go on to your questions <laughs> smashed it absolutely <laughs> drilled it so guys so davis love I, 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 I. Review, uh, swing analysis. So, Davis, unbelievable, you know. I, like I know you smashed that. <laughs> uh, you'll see also the GC2 data up on screen as well. Hopefully, if it's worked, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, Davis Love has quite a classic golf swing. Very timeless golf swing, which has developed slightly over the years from the 80s to, to 2015. How crazy is that? It's crazy, isn't it? It's really? literally, we've just, seen, we've just seen a clip where almost a year we were born, his swing analysis compared to his swing now. Put it this way, the first clip that we saw, he had a still wooden headed. Yeah, wooden, persimmon. He was still using a persimmon <laughs> driver, which is like Crazy. incredible, really. And now winning on tour at the age of 51 years and four months. Crazy. Unbelievable. Well done. And I would say from this standpoint, this timeless swing has, has, has helped him create such a long longevity to his golf career. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's nothing... Within his swing, I mean, some, some players you see who have very individual, very kind of unique swings when they're younger, they can't quite carry on because the compensations and the movements that they have to make when they get older, it, it lessens the impact that the swing used to have. You know, it's not as consistent and they can't quite kind of use it to the same level. Now, with Davis Love, his swing has changed, but a lot of the factors that were there in the 80s are still there today. Yeah. And actually looking at the swing, you'd probably say his swing is more technically sound now yeah, 100 percent than he was. And I'm so. sure that's probably come from technology, um, from from seeing these because from the eighties to now the technology's moved on significantly in the coaching world. From the launch ones to the cameras to equipment, he's probably developed things and also, you know, he's he's aged. So the mm -hmm. flexibility, the range of movement that he has is probably not as good as where, when he was in the eighties. So he's had to adapt to golf swing to help him hit the ball as consistently as he does do now. Yeah. What we notice the biggest difference is setup is almost identical. His setup is fantastic. Yep. And it's very, like I say, God, we can we can beat around the bush here, but it's ball ball inside left heel, 
a slight tilt in the upper body, wide stance, very strong athletic position. In the 80s, Mr. Love was very steep. Left arm was very tall at the top of his golf swing. I'm turning around this way. Was very tall at the top of the swing. And then when he came down, just a small drop and would hit it just slightly from the inside. Another big factor, if you turn to face the camera, Pete, is he's incredibly wide in his takeaway. He really doesn't get this wrist hinge to get too active too early. Yeah. So he's not looking at 90 degrees, he's looking at more like 120 degree angle going back in his swing. Yeah. Wrists mostly only start hinging at about the three quarter point really when they're fully hinged. So this was swing in the 80s, much more upright. Swing now, if you turn back to camera. Sorry, yeah, that way, my fault. And show now the new backswing. So it used to be very wide, but now it's pretty much the same takeaway, nice and wide. But from this point on, rather than just going upwards and wide, it's a little bit more rounded around the body. So the left arm is more in line with shoulder plane as opposed to being really upright. Now, it used to be one of the longest hitters on tour, and that is a movement we see a lot of long hitters play. You see your guys like your Bubba Watson, your Dustin Johnson, very, very high at the top, where now he's become a little bit more compact, a little bit more rounded. I'm sure he's not got the range of mo movement that he used to have. And that is such a technically sound golf swing that will help him repeat that action on the way down time and time and time. After. Absolutely. You, yeah. you'd, you'd have to say with this swing, um, although it's a little bit more compact, although it's a little bit flatter, it's still wide. Oh, yeah, yeah he's, mega he's wide. Just, he's just kind of refined it yeah. just a little bit more. So he still, he still really uses no wrist hinge moving back. So all he really does, if you just go back there one more time, sorry Pete. To address. This angle here from the left arm to the wrist, he basically just turns that onto its side. So as he goes back, that same angle is created again. So he's not actually trying to force the wrist angle there. From there, the rotation kicks in and that's where the left arm can go more across the chest. On the way down, he drops the club back into the same position as he used to many years ago. And from there, just powers all the way through and full extension through. I mean, it is a fun, it's, you know, it's just amazing. It's just a great technically sound golf swing. Easy. And this is why he's had such a long career. You know, 30 years of playing great golf. Scary, isn't it, really? 30 years of winning. 30 years of winning. Winning. Nice shots, Peter. Yeah, thank you. I, you know what, for my first few in the morning, I'm pretty happy with that. Is that, ah, I'll tell you that. You know what, I think those in the morning, my first straightest drives I think I've ever hit first thing. What you have to do is play mega early. Yeah, unbelievable. See if I can split those two. Go on then, Daves. Wide. Big and wide. A little bit flat anyway, so. Too much? <laughs> Snapper. Didn't like it move that much. Sorry to break it to you. I know, I know, I know, I know. That wasn't great. That was my first shot. Go on, have one more, then we'll get to the questions. Thanks, Peter. Sorry. Right. Appreciate it. It's all right. Don't worry about it. So I've got this one. I believe you. I don't think David's ever made that move before. <laughs> good hits, but just turning. Come out very dead, though. It's got to be a decent distance, that. Get out. Look at that. Get out there, Pierre. I know you are getting out there now, aren't you? That came out super dead. That first one was horrible. <laughs> There's absolutely nothing on that. That's all right. I've still got to split the difference between yours two. That looked good. Split the difference. Yes! Took that. me three attempts, though. Right, let's go over to your questions. And that was Davis Love, I, 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 swing analysis. Last time I'm going to do that, maybe. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed the Davis Love. You're not going to do that. I'm going to let you do it. <laughs> I, 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 swing analysis there. Um, fantastic action, and I'm sure it will continue for many years to come. Right, questions, let's get over to that. We asked on Pete's Facebook last night uh, some questions, and you yeah. absolutely fulfilled our requirements. You asked absolutely loads last yeah, night. It was great. Last night, which it. was great. Um, let's answer top light. Uh, we'll go off the top lights first. Lee Len Bolton. Uh, we pay a lot of money for golf clubs, but never seen any tips on club maintenance. Uh, what are your top tips for looking after golf equipment? That had, that had the most likes. Um, I, I don't. To be honest, Len, it's nothing massively complicated. After you play, clean them. Um, WD forty them. About it. WD4? I've, I didn't, I've never heard that one. WD4 your clubs. I just go hot soapy water, old toothbrush or old nail brush, give them a scrub, 
uh, dry them off. If you want to, if you want to make your handles much tacky, this is a great tip actually. Hot soapy water. Get an old like nail brush. You know what you clean your nails with. Stick it in. Really scrub them to get all the debris out. Rinse them, but then let them dry naturally. Don't towel dry them. They come out really sticky. What's a nail brush? Like you know what you clean your nails with? No. Yeah, people know what. Or a, a, like a really hard like toothbrush. Uh, right. You've seen them before. What? <laughs> Bro, nail brush. Mechanics, you got a mechanic, nail mechanics brush? will know what I mean. Mechanics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is like a parallel universe I know nothing about. It's like, it's, it's, it's a little brush, it's great size, it's perfect. And you hold it with one hand and you can like clean your nails with the other. Not like file them, like clean them. <laughs> Say, rip your hands off. So, uh, what is the biggest, Danny Young, what is the biggest difference between a pro like yourselves and the top of the game, Rory, Jordan, and so on. After your visits to the Open, is it putting long game or mental? Uh, we are soon to find oh. out exactly what the differences are gonna be. I, I would say all of the above, Yeah, all of the above. We'll put it this way, that program I played the other day, shot level, Rory or Jordan around that course, Eight nine under. Eight nine under easy. Easily. Easy. So I reckon from those guys, we are probably eight or nine shots per round away from where they are at the moment. Now, bearing in mind, put that over four rounds of a tournament, a long way away. It's a hell of a long way away. If, if, like I say, if we need to be able to go around somewhere like, wherever, a, a comparable golf course, if we ever get a chance to play a top golf course off the bat tees, that's really going to put our game to test and see how we would have fared against other players. I'm sure this is going to be all in our quest to, quest to the Open as well, so stay tuned for all of those. Uh, we're going to find out more about it as well, aren't we? Because we don't quite know what the difference is we know what we know what it is overall, but yeah. we don't know no, the absolute difference. The, in, just yet. the ins and the outs. The ins and the outs of it. Uh, next one, uh, Ian Gimbert. If only one of you guys got to the open, <laughs> <laughs> would you ask the other one to caddy, or would you ask someone who you mo who was more knowledgeable about golf? All right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, Rick, I just want to approach an awkward subject with you. Um, wow. I'm not massively keen on you caddying for me in the open because I want someone who's more knowledgeable than you. Wow. Ian. Wow, that would be that would be an awkward conversation. So, wow, yeah. Um, do you, I don't know. Do you need more? Do you need someone that's more... Who'd you ask? Butch? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Hey, Butch, you fancy caddying. Um, Call it Stevie Williams. Yeah, I'm not sure. About that, uh, we'll, we'll if if one of us does get to it, I'm sure the natural progression would be for one of the other ones to caddy without question. We'll see how we get there. We'll see. We'll see we, when we get there. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yes. <laughs> so Nick uh, Chatherton Godby here asks: On average, around the golf takes about four hours, but how long does a course vlog take to film? Um, Great question. That's a good question. And you hopefully it'll explain to why maybe we only play nine hole course vlogs. I mean, you're looking at nine holes about three hours. Yeah, they do take a long time. The, the thing is, it's it, it does just take a long time. Because if you think about it, when you watch the course vlogs, who would talk for that length of time over each no, shot? You, you wouldn't. If you're playing with someone like that, you'd bury a three iron around the red. <laughs> you just wouldn't want to be there. So yeah. it takes ages. Plus, and, you... and the thing is, let's say me and Pete were playing on our own and we hit drivers, one down the right, one down the left. You both walk to your separate balls. You both hit, you meet on the green again. Never a word was spoken. Where this, we've got to go to one ball, chat, 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 go across the other ball, chat, 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 hit, go up. Separate balls again, chat, chat, chat. You know, it, it, then, it does take a long time. Then you've got to let the people through who are coming up behind. Yeah, and, and that's why we either play stuff. ridiculously early in the morning and mainly on the back nine of places, or if we can play super late in the afternoon where there's no one out on the golf course. If you are, are ever behind us on a course log, <laughs> we apologise in advance because it is just slow. It is slow. It is slow. So, yes, I'm, we're very sorry. Yes. But we're not going to stop. That's why we mainly only make them nine holes. <laughs> <laughs> Lots more three holes coming up. Yeah. <laughs> right, guys. So I just want to finish on one last um, post that's been uh, on, put on here. Uh, my thirteen handicap test of th Rob Potter. Uh, it's not particularly a question, but he asked for a big, a big favour. Uh, his good friend and golfing buddy William James Partinson is in a coma and fighting for his life in critical care after being knocked off his motorbike on Thursday. He's an ex exceptional golfer playing off a two handicap and was looking to turn pro very soon. Could you please ask 
uh, for a massive shout out from all your followers on all streams of media to post hashtag get well soon will uh, it, it, I want to try and get it trending worldwide so we see the love from all the golfing community yes absolutely guys please do do that go on hashtag uh, tweet get well soon will uh, and hopefully will you're going to recover get back on your your dream to become a professional golfer and, and like I say with all the support you've got from everyone watching I'm sure uh, the love will be passed over and you will uh, you will recover and get back onto your, your golf course and get playing golf again. Right guys, so thank you very much for watching this episode of the Monday Night Golf Show with myself, Rick Shields and Peter Finch. As always, you can subscribe to us both by clicking the big buttons down here, checking us out on our social media platforms, comment down below, and we shall see you all very soon at what we're doing next. This is, this is our last time filming at Trafford. Is it really? Potentially, we might be here next week as well. But we'll see how we get on. But this is potentially our last time? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty deep. Just to finish it there. <laughs>